Hello YouTubers, um, we're back with the uh, Beetle. I know this was uh, going to be the, <coughs> the uh, start of our body work and paint, uh, but I wanted to show you this real quick. Um, here we have our old electromagnetic cutoff, okay, and we have it grounded to the battery. You can see the spark. nothing. You kind of jar it a little bit and it'll work once. And I got zapped again. Uh, so there's there's something something wrong with this. Maybe maybe it's me that I think I'm getting a high voltage zap. Maybe it's because my socks are sweaty and, and I've got a better ground. I don't know. Who knows? But I do know this one uh, that my brother sent me. Uh, this is a Brazilian uh, Brosol, and this is a Bocar, which is a Mexican. every time. So you see there is a difference and if I put that one in there that doesn't and also I'm not getting shocked here uh, so you know I, and, and, and I'm in the same sweaty socks <laughs> whatever you know the same shoes whatever uh, on the same ground so the thing is uh, if your electromagnetic uh, cutoff is not working properly uh, what you will end up with is a, is a car that won't run. So I'm going to put this on the car and uh, I promised I would mail this back to him and let him do extensive testing on it. So we'll put that in there. Nice packaging by the way, Brian. Anyways, thank you so much for sending this to me. I appreciate this. Uh, I'm glad you had another one. Uh, Brian, I certainly appreciate it, and uh, I'll send the old one back to you in the postage. So, uh, okay, let's get on to get on to painting, or bodywork, or the next segment. Okay, uh, we're back, and um, I wanted to uh, tell you that uh, that uh, switch was also tested in the carburetor, and it did the exact same thing that I showed you before. So that switch was bad. Okay, um, some things that I want to talk to you about about painting first. Um, and for, first thing you have to have is a plan. Um, and you need, if you're going to paint your car, the first thing what you need to do is choose uh, what kind of paint you're going to use, how much money you're going to spend, uh, your uh, color scheme. Colors are expensive. Okay, white is cheap, colors are expensive. Um, that being said, um, you have to choose your scheme. Uh, I am a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Uh, however, I do know what I'm doing uh, when I'm painting. Uh, I've watched it. I've watched body shops for 30 years. Uh, this is a... a, a a scout guitar that I had painted. Uh, this is a four color flame on uh, GM white uh, with a hundred year anniversary of the OA and this Les Paul also features our Crew 2021 logo, the Venturing logo, uh, some custom touches on uh, the treble and rhythm sw switch uh, uh, cor correlating with uh, with uh, rank advancements in, in that particular deal. Uh, it's customized for me. This guitar took me uh, 24 hours to lay out in, in paint, but I had to have a I had to have a a uh, plan first. So it, it all starts with a plan. Um, I can show you how to do all this stuff on here, but it's mind-boggling hard to do it on a big item. So we're going to do uh, a little bit simpler of a scheme. 
and uh, I'll try my best to step you through it and show you everything that I know. And uh, let me get that part there so it doesn't fall. Uh, one thing I want to show you is uh, some designs. And uh, I had a beetle at one time uh, that was painted in such a fashion. If you look at this uh, cabriolet up here, uh, is it? Yes, yeah, it's a, it's a convertible. Has a red insert in, in black. I'm going to do a white insert and a light blue outside. And, well, why aren't you going to paint your car the same color? Well, here's the deal is this is Oklahoma and it gets fantastically hot. So I need a light color car because this car does not have air conditioning. And I need a, uh, a light color interior. And so here's a, there's another picture that really fascinated me. Incidentally, Brian, thank you for the book. Yes, I still have it in my library. How about that? Uh, this fascinated me quite a bit and I did one piece windows on my Beetle, my 70, and, uh, and, uh, and I made it myself too. <laughs> I didn't buy a kit, I did it myself. Um, and the paint scheme was such. Okay, so what is going to sway me into uh, doing this is what kind of paint you have. Alright, let's talk about paint. now. Enamel is great. The car was originally painted with enamel. When you rub it, it comes off on the cloth. Uh, you rub it enough, you get down to the primer. It's great. If you're painting a uh, Concourse Edition Heb Mueller, or you have a 52 Zwitter that uh, you know that you want absolutely perfect, and it has to be the original walk away from this video, okay? Because I'm not going to show you that. What I'm going to show you is an inexpensive paint job that can be had, or an excellent paint job, I should say, that can be had inexpensively. Well, how is that going to start? Well, first thing it's going to start by you going all all these body shops and begging their dribs and drabs of paint or base coat, okay? Now, this is a two-stage, these are two-stage, uh, this is a two-stage paint job. Actually, it's really a three-stage with what I'm going to do. And if you want to count count the uh, count the uh, uh, primer coat, it's four stages. But uh, uh, traditionally, it's called a two-stage paint job. If you do candies, uh, it's three-stage. Um, what 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 denotes this paint job is I had a body shop give me three quarts of small blue mica. Okay, and that that translates into a light pearl blue. So right off the bat, I have three quarts of light pearl blue. All right, that has not been reduced. Uh, reduction can be sprayable. Reduction can be uh, on two quarts would be three quarts of sprayable material. We need about a gallon and a half of sprayable material. So I have another quart in there. And I'm going to separate the paints uh, so I can show you what we have. I'm going to separate the whites uh, because we're going to have the center section of the car as a pearl white. I'm going to take all the pearl whites and I have, I have uh, some pearl whites here and we're going to use those. And, uh, and then I'm going to have uh, separate all the whites also and the blues and I need to find the other can of this. Incidentally I have a can of uh, light red mica as well. And if you mix that you'd have a light purple but I don't want a purple car man. Okay so it's going to be kind of a very light blue. Uh, it will reflect the sun nicely. It will not hold heat and with a light interior like an off-white interior it'll be a very cool car and I don't mean Wow, man, hang loose, cool. It'll be a very cool car. Uh, those are some things you have to take into consideration. If you live in the north, it's perfectly acceptable to have a black car or a red car. But man, when you live down in Oklahoma and it's 110 degrees or, or Arizona or, De or Texas or something, it's hot, man. And these cars don't fare well with air conditioners in them. Well, I mean, you, you can. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Okay, so begging your 
base coats, okay? This is a base base layer and it's going to have clear on top of it. So you're going to have to pay for the clear. You're going to have to pay for your reducer. You're going to have to pay for your primer, pay for your uh, lacquer thinner, and pay for your materials. Um, so, But you can beg those because the body shop has to pay money. They have to pay money for people to take that stuff away. Okay, they'll hold on to it for six months or something like that, and then they have to pay to take it away. Another thing you can do is when you go into body shops, see here's the deal is I've been working with body shops, some of them for 30 years. I've been doing their glass work for them for 30 years. So, you know, I just go through their trash, through their, through their, and I have a box of this stuff. So you can wrap this stuff around a block, and you're not paying for sandpaper to do your rough stuff, to do your rough work. And, and you know, that's 20 bucks, 30 bucks. It, it all adds up. So you have to save as much money as you can when you do this or you'll get skinned. How much does a clear coat, base coat paint job cost? Do you know? Paint that car out there, it's about $3,000. Maybe more, depending on what color you paint it. So we're going to do this for about six to $700. Is it going to be concourse perfect? No. We already explained that to, me, to you. If you got a Hepp Mueller <laughs> or, or, or a, uh, you know, one, of the, one of the first two split windows that ever entered the country, walk away from this video, okay? So this is going to be a very durable, uh, durable uh, uh, coat. It's going to last for a long time. And it consists of two parts, and that's a base, which is the color, which is expensive, and a clear. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but let's just take, for instance, this. That's quite a pretty red, isn't that? It's kind of a beautiful red, right? Well, it's about, it's almost a half a quart of sprayable material. And that's about... $200 if you actually went out to buy it. I am not kidding how expensive this stuff is. It's really expensive. So you got to think about it. Oh, well, I'll just paint my car with enamel. Well, that's, that's fine, and you can spend just as much money. And what you'll have is an enamel job. You won't have a clear coat job. So neat thing about clear coat is when you lay it all out, and if you get runs, you can cut the runs off of it, and you can color sand it, and you can make it look like a freaking mirror. It will look beautiful. So, uh, we're going to think about that. Some other things about your plan. Um, you need to, I'm going to set up the Quonset hut outside over the, over the car. And, uh, and what we'll do is uh, equip it with the... Uh, the tools and the compressor and air and electricity and all that stuff that we can work on. We're going to start on the car and when we start on the car the first thing we're going to do is our sandblasting and then we're going to do our metal work and then we're going to uh, coat the underneath side of, of the car, the bottom side of it. I'm going to use black rust-oleum because I have some. Uh, and then I'm going to paint the inside of the trunk and the inside of the hood. That's the, the engine and the engine compartment and the trunk compartment. Uh, then I'm going to paint the quarters where the uh, wheels go. And then I'm going to paint the interior. Why are you going to do the interior last? Well, if you paint the inside of the, of the hood, some of that stuff will come through and it will run down onto your nicely painted fresh dash and you don't want that. If you want any runs coming, you want them going out of the car, not into the car. So they, they hide a whole lot better. It's all a part of, of thinking, thinking this through and how you're going to do it. Um, so then we're going to paint the inside, then we're going to paint the inside of the fenders inside of the car, right? Like dashboard and stuff. Then we're going to paint the inside of the fenders and the hood and the deck lid and stuff. And we're going to mount all that stuff on the car after we put that body on the car, on the on the chassis. We're going to put body on the chassis. Mount all the, the fenders and hood on it. Then we're going to paint the outside of the car. So there's so much to do before you even paint the part that everybody's going to see. <laughs> and that's 12 minutes into this diatribe, so God, let's get, let's get, let's get mixing. Let's look at some color. <clears throat> when you crack these open, 
uh, you need to mix them up, of course. Sometimes whites don't fare as well when they've been sitting around. Uh, they, they get kind of chunky, and so you need to kind of kind of mix that all up. If you've got a paint shaker, that's great. Dump that all in there. Now, I, I will tell you this. Uh, you'll never match this color again. Okay? That's why it's important that you have a whole lot of material. Because if you run out of material, you're screwed. All right, and if you have a collision, you're screwed. So you want to have enough of this to fix whatever problem you might have in the future. A scrape, a fender bender, you know, a replacement or something like that. You need to have a lot of it. And again, free from the body shops around your area, I swear. Um, I'm a scouter, so um, they know that, and so I can beg their dribs and drabs. I, well, I've been doing work for them for 30 years, all five or six body shops, so uh, so they know me anyway. So if I just say, hey, I want to paint my car, they're like, oh yeah, welcome to it, whatever. Uh, but at first, I would beg their dribs and drabs from uh, Boy Scout projects, Eagle projects, and, uh, and Cub Scout uh uh, Pinewood Derby projects and chuck boxes and all that stuff like that and uh, and they they would let me have this stuff inspect your paint and make sure that none of it is kind of gone bad this looks odd and if anything looks kind of odd you probably don't want it Oh no, it's coming around now. So you, you want to think about that if it if it looks mildewy or separated really bad or it's got a lot of chunks in the bottom or something like that. You have to think about how long this has been and like I said, whites don't fare very well. So let's get mixing. So this uh, paint is pretty thin to begin with so you don't need a lot of reducer. Um, unless it hasn't been reduced. The dribs and drabs, the stuff that's in the original uh, one quart containers is going to need to be reduced by 50 percent. Uh, so, uh, you know, don't you, you know, you can't use paint thinner or uh, or uh, or mineral spirits or something. You actually have to use a reducer, a urethane reducer. There are three styles of urethane reducer. There's a fast, a slow, and a medium. Uh, don't cheap out on your reducer, don't cheap out on your paint, don't cheap out on your clear. Um, like I said, th this paint job, when you lay it out, it lays out really nice and it looks really good. I mean, you can, you can medium out on your clear, but on your bases and your, uh, your uh, uh, reducer, don't cheap out on it. Um, you might ask me, gee, why are you mixing so much white? You only got that little spot. Now, nah, contraire, mon frere. See, here's the deal. Is that's a very light color, that blue, right? Okay, so what's the primer color you're going to use? Are you going to use a gray primer? No, you're going to use a red primer. And if you shoot that blue over a red primer, you know what's going to happen? You're going to see the red through it. So you have to lay down a base coat for the base coat. Hey! which is going to suck because I have to lay out a white base coat and then spray a light blue over it. So it's going to be hard to see. But I'd rather, I'd rather it be done right and at least you won't see red through it. Um, another thing is uh, people got this idea that they have to buy these special paint pails and such like that. The special paint pail down to Walmart was uh, five dollars and in the mop aisle this was two dollars. Guess which one I got. Okay I will tell you something else also. This paint pail has a pouring spout. The other one did not. 
Well, it's going to eat right into the plastic. No, it's the same kind of plastic. I'm going to set this aside because we're going to mix it up. Well, yeah. We'll mix that all together once we get these all in there. Let's see. Lizard purple. So, more to do. So, got to get all the whites in there first. There's our white right there. There's our color. What color white is it? It's got a lot of pearl in it, I'll tell you that. Uh, but I couldn't tell you what color white it is. Um, these two cans over here, when I opened them up, uh, they, they were distinctly pink on the top, so the colors had separated. Uh, the reds stayed in the solvent. And, you know, even though it's white, people say, oh, it's, it's white. No, it's, it's made up of, uh, you know, a little, little bit of red and a little bit of blue. And just, it depends on what kind of, what kind of color. But just a, uh, just a micron of it, you know, and it changes the color from a white, from a white base. Anyways, um, here's our, we've got about two gallons here. It's lovely. Two gallons of white, uh, white pearl. It, 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 it could be in the $600 range, $700 range, something like that. And I, I got it free. So we're going to put these, we're going to put this in that can over here in those two bottles. And then we'll work on our blue. Again, we need this much because it's an underlayment, underlayment for the blue. You'll see how light the blue is, and you can't just lay the blue on it. It's kind of translucent, and you have to have something underneath it. Sometimes it's this way. Um, so there you go. I'm going to fatten the blue up a little bit. I do have a little bit. I have a little bit of darker blue. So, and if we get it too fat, we can always add some white to it to make it lighter. So okay. Got about uh, a half a gallon, a little better than half a gallon in there, a little more than half a gallon, and four liters. So, yeah, it's almost two gallons. So that's quite a bit. All right. Well, I'd love to set up my little Quonset hut around this, but. Uh, 
have to let that dry off a little bit, I think, first. Or unfreeze, or whatever it is you want, might want to say. This is that... Uh, that came in today. Alright, well, let's try for a little bit later on. Okay, uh, by the miracle of uh, modern conveniences, it's the next day. Uh, all that snow is supposed to melt today, and by tomorrow I should be able to put up my Shangri-La. What's a Shangri-La? Well, that's the little Quonset hut thing I'm going to use to uh, protect my car from the elements, and also uh, uh, shield it from uh, the neighbors and uh, the smell and such from my wife. Uh, she doesn't like the smell of <laughs> all that paint and whatnot, and I don't blame her any. It's uh, pretty pretty bad. Okay, so let's have a look at this color. Um, this is a, a really uh, light blue. Uh, we might darken it just a tick, just a little bit. Uh, again, you need an underlayment. Uh, of uh, of white for this color because it's it's so uh, uh, thin, pearlescent, I should say. Interesting. That's going to be an interesting color. Why are you doing the worrying about paint right now? Well, I'm worried about paint right now simply because uh, uh, it's free. And since it's free, um, I have to uh, think about uh, if, if it's not the right color, or I mess up the color, or, 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 uh, I can source some more. This uh, paint has been sourced by, uh, wow, that is interesting. That is going to be interesting, folks. Uh, it was sourced by uh, several months of, of uh, body shops and uh, finding things. And this one uh, shop I've been doing work for for probably 30 years gave me these. So this is very nice. That's very pearlescent, and it's very thin. I don't know if I want that color. It's very, very thin blue, but it's it is pretty. It is quite pretty. It will be interesting. That's for sure. It will be one of a kind. Okay, let's get this mixed all up, and we'll get it in our bucket, and then we'll transfer it. We'll get a color going, and then uh, if we like it, then we'll uh, we'll transfer it into our bottles, and we'll be done with this. I've got some blues and such, and um, got a little bit more pearl. That's pretty nice, like that. It's kind of a nice color, isn't it? I could darken it up just a tick. I don't know if I want to, though. Can you just put a, I put just like a half a pint of this uh, dark blue in there and it really changed the color. So you have to be careful. What else do we have here? Blue Sky Metallic. I'll have to look at that. Uh, midnight Blue. Yeah, that's going to be too dark for that. Very pretty right there. Uh, mix up a little more and see what we can get. Okay, I've added a little a little silver metallic to it and it's got a little bit nicer flavor to it. It's almost like a blue, kind of a bluish silver. I really like that. That's pretty. And we've got a lot of material here. Probably can be thinned down just a little more. Now I 
I think it'd be okay. Well, oh, that's not too bad. That ought to atomize. Um, uh, you don't have to have a real fancy spray gun or anything like that. Uh, I have uh, two guns, uh, and both of them I bought at Harbor Freight. Um, if you put uh, a $200 guitar in Eric Clapton's hands, it'll sound like Clapton. Uh, you know, it's it's not the paint gun; it's the talent. So I know guys that buy those Harbor Freight paint guns and they spray a job, and they don't—they're so cheap that they don't even—they don't even clean them. They just throw them away and buy another gun. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. So anyways, that looks about right. That's a really pretty color, kind of a silverish blue metallic. Um, it's got a lot of pearl in it too. That ought to be fabulous. And you know, think about uh, that color as the car and then um, nice and light and airy with a white uh, insert, uh, pearl white insert. And uh, because all the pearls we used in those paints, it'll be you know a special white, and like the, like I said, you'll never be able to match this color again ever. So you want to make sure you have lots of paint to cover the car and to cover any kind of problems you might have later on, uh, you know, fender bender or something like that. So all right, let's get this bottled up, and we'll be good to go. There's a the final color. Um, I have nearly four liters here and about three quarters of a quart here so if I can spray the car with these I'll have nearly half a quart for full pause or maybe I need a little more uh, here's a better look kind of a nice airy blue kind of a color that ought, to, that ought to be fine. That ought to be beautiful from cleaning out my uh, funnel. Uh, some other things I did, got out my welder, uh, got some wire in it, and uh, tightened up the belt on my old compressor and changed the oil in it because we're going to put that into duty. And uh, here's another issue I need to fix. I need two of these actually because I've got another device that doesn't have a ground on it and it doesn't hold it in the wall very well I mean it works but it doesn't hold it in the wall very well it need needs to be fixed anyways addressed okay so uh, I'm gonna head up to the hardware store and get me a couple of plugs and uh, I've got to go to work but by the miracle of the camera I'll be back tomorrow which will be about two seconds from now and um, we'll put up the uh, the uh, Shangri-La Looks like a goat screw, doesn't it? Uh, by by all means, it is. <laughs> but <laughs> it's my goat screw. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut these there and there. Um, this one's attached, screwed underneath. Um, the cart's there on wood. It shouldn't sink too bad. Same with this one. When I cut this, of course, this is going to flop, so I'll have to probably jack it up or something okay uh, about the and then the legs will come off and I'll be able to walk around it um, the Shangri-La okay this is the back of it and there is uh, landscape timbers and they go under the tarp and then um, the orange spikes are the yellow spikes those will be driven in Okay, um, then uh, it's screwed to the back of this. Um, normally this has, uh, on the back it has uh, ropes, three ropes holding it, but I'm going to support it up. Uh, both pieces are bolted together. They bolt together with three bolts. And uh, I'm going to put some two by fours between my fence and this and support it with my fence a little bit. And then... Um, um, let's see, what was I going to do? Oh, uh, the tarp there goes underneath the 
underneath that. And of course there's two of them on either side and they're eight foot apiece because four foot and four foot is eight feet. Okay, so we've got eight feet by 16 feet. That's how long we've got. And uh, in each one of those holes goes a piece of PVC. And so it will bow over like a Quonset hut and have it's a half inch PVC and then you have an inch piece of PVC or whatever inch and a quarter that holds it together at the top. And then I have a ridge pole going from the top of that one to the top of that one over there. Awful difficult to explain, huh? Okay, well, let's just get working and, and we'll get this up. All right, well, I uh, kind of lowered the center of gravity on the Voxy and uh, put them on the cart. So uh, did that and I put up my back wall and um, uh, you know so <laughs> and normally it has ropes holding it but uh, I got thinking about something last night. Actually I was dreaming that I was working on this car last night and um, I couldn't see what I was doing and I woke up and I said blue tarp <laughs> You can't put a blue tarp on there. If you put a blue tarp on there, you're not going to get any light in. So uh, I went and opted for a clear tarp. All right, we have our landscape timbers uh, right there, and they've got the they've got the tarp wrapped up in it. And uh, I'm going to go put the other side down in the ridge pole, and uh, put that side of the wall together over there. And uh, I'll show you when I get it done because it's awful hard to take and film this at the same time, but you'll get the idea.
Well, it's the story of my life. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, this is uh, about three inches too short and I wrapped it twice on that pole there, on those poles. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll have to go back and get another one. And I guess what I'll do is I'll just cut some, or buy some, one by, and I'll just staple it to the side. And I'll roll it just once on the one by, and staple it to the side, and then roll it over. Yeah, I thought I was gonna get her out of the rain. I guess it's gonna rain tonight. What are you gonna do? Well, I'm losing all my sun, so I'm gonna roll that plastic up and head on inside. Yeah, well, <laughs> can't get everything accomplished in one video, eh? Alright, see you in the next one.